Hello, this is Deborah Cohen. Thank you for joining me. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion in the United States about Israel at war. And from what I hear in the American media, it's rather slanted. And uh, I don't agree with the President of the United States telling Israel uh, that they have a deadline in the war when we didn't have a deadline in the United States when we were fighting Iraq, nor in uh, Vietnam. I think that war went on for 10 years when I was a 20-year-old uh, young woman and people were protesting the same. It's the same, you know, like whatever country it is, there's always somebody at war. And like I'm a John Lennon fan and I believe in giving peace a chance. But at this point, I heard an, an Israeli friend of mine say, we're beyond give peace a chance. We're, we want justice. And so I think that we need to do everything that we can to bring the Israeli captives home. No matter where you are, it is so wrong for any of us to get up on our high horse and think that uh, we should be more concerned for refugees that are supposed to be taken care of by the United Nations and are not. So instead of putting Israel on the hot seat, we need to put the UN on the hot seat. And I would love to read comments from anybody listening to find out how we can obtain peace today. Thank you for joining Bella Faranto, if I said your name right, and H-A-R Vayweiner. I'm talking about feeling helpless in wanting to do something to bring the captives home, the Israeli captives, 136 of them. Yeah, I mean, this has gone on way too long. There's no hope in sight, it seems, to bring them home. And for all of the Americans, especially in the colleges that are pro-Palestinian, um, it's, it's like nobody's listening to who started this war in Israel. And there's no distinction between Hamas and the Palestinians in most college students that I've listened to. They just stereotype and put the Palestinians in with Hamas. And I've even heard American college students say that pro-Hamas. And, you know, when you say you are for Hamas, then you are justifying the kidnapping of infants, women, children, the soldiers, civilians. I mean, it's not right in any situation. So I just would like to offer what knowledge I have from, uh, and if anybody else has a sincere opinion to share how we can resolve this issue, but the first thing is that we need to do is bring the captives home, meaning home to Israel. Some Israeli politicians are saying, if you bring the Israeli captives home, we will stop invading Gaza. Because number one in the Israeli culture is family. And Hamas has taken family members away from the Jews. And of course, any normal family would, if you want to use a strong word, retaliate, would go after their family members that have been captive. So Hamas is the one that we need to be screaming at, and nobody seems to be doing that. Why uh, is nobody in the world coming, making Hamas accountable for what they've done? It seems like the terrorist group, 
Hamas, and Hamas is a terrorist group. Why aren't our politicians holding them accountable to this terrorist behavior? The United States itself, when they went after Iraq, said it was because of terrorists. So why is it okay for the United States to invade Iraq and stay over there until they obtained their goal? I guess it was to pull Saddam Hussein out of a hole. <laughs> you know, nobody told the USA, stop that war because you're killing, you know, what, let's see, what is it, Donald Rumsfeld in the war called the civilians? Well, there's going to be some collateral damage. You know, how dare the U.S. say that about civilians in Afghanistan or wherever it may be, but yet you're putting the pressure, the President of the United States is putting pressure on the Israeli government to, to cease fire because uh, of a supposed genocide, South Africa really needs to wake up because that's not happening on Israel's part. It's really flipped if you look at it. The Israelis were minding their own business on their own land, and these Hamas terrorists on October 7th, 2024, invaded Israeli land and murdered and massacred people and people that were in a music festival. And that's okay, according to these college students in America that I've been listening to. And you're pro-Palestinian and you're clumping Hamas in with Palestinians. I need, uh, I, I don't know what history book you're reading, but, it, it, you know, you need to kind of get the whole picture instead of saddling up on your anger and hating the victims. The Jews are the victims here. So I see people that are watching me. What do you propose for peace? Is, is it ever possible to have peace? I ask you. I see several people here listening. Uh, Shop Shopeter joined. Uh, Vale Faronato, <laughs> Harpoint Ve Weiner, and I'm glad we haven't been invaded by the Palestinians yet. But I'll just tell you, you know, like if any of you are familiar with Golda Meir, if you look at Golda Meir's passport, it says she is a Palestinian. So this is where part of the problem lies with the lies in this worldly government that says that the Palestinians are exclusively Arab. They are not. When Britain controlled the land of Palestine, it was Jews and Arabs living together. Jews and Arabs. And they were, most of them lived in peace side by side. So why all of a sudden, when the Jews and the Arabs live together peacefully on the land before it officially became Israel, why all of a sudden, and you know, there are Arabs in Israel that are Israeli citizens and they live in peace. So we're talking about a, a select group of Arabs that came from Jordan and Egypt under the leadership of, what's his name there? Yes, sir, Arafat, who was an Egyptian. Egyptians came together with pa Jordanian Palestinians and came up with this word, uh, Palestinians, exclusively to Arabs, when that's just a sect of Palestinians. If you're going to fight a, 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 for your Palestinian friends, you need to know that there are Palestinian Jews as well as Palestinian Arabs, you know? So, you know, you're only, you're only getting half the picture from these professors in the United States that are teaching you biased information, hate, hate messages. Now, I just wanted to come on here and 
plead with the POTUS, the President of the United States, and President Biden, and tell him, you know, you know that if any of these Israeli hostages were family members of any of our government employees in Congress or the president or who have you, you bet your booty they would have already found the captives and brought them home. Although there are Americans in this group of 136 hostages, I've not heard anything about the Americans that are also in this 136 captive. Have, have you, has anybody heard anything about this? Like, I think there's seven of them. I'm not sure, but you know, why the quiet? Why isn't anybody like saying, making an uproar as Americans for fellow Americans that are part of this group of captives in Gaza? I mean, come on, people. What's going on here? I just don't understand why there's a lot of noise about half the issue. And, you know, nobody wants to say anything about helping the Jews because you know you're going to get uh, ransacked by the haters. <laughs> I don't know why they're not on here. I don't want them to come over here, but I just think it's funny. The trolls, right? Is that what they call them? Trolls. I, I, you know, write to your senators, write to your congressmen, demand that the Israeli captives, even if they're Americans, they're all clumped into the term Israeli captives. All 136 of them need to come home today. Now, now I could go on a roll and seeing you guys are still on here, I'm going to keep talking. The United Nations needs to be put on the hot seat, as I mentioned a little bit ago. The United Nations has several departments in its organization. The two that I'm going to talk about are the UNHCR and UNRWA, U-N-R-W-A, okay? So I've had personal dealings with UNHCR. They are Their responsibility is to resettle civilians in times of war to safer areas. For example, when... Southern Sudan was per, was um, being persecuted by Northern Sudan. Northern Sud Sudanese Arabs were cleansing Southern Sudan of the Christian Sudanese. So UN stepped in, the UNHCR, and resettled the Southern Sudanese because their lives were in danger. They were being displaced by the Sudanese northern government. And I took in a family of southern Sudanese Christians into my home. I think this was in 1999. And they lived with me until they could get established on their own. So this is an example of what the UNHCR does. Now, the UNHCR would be, theoretically, uh, as a department of the UN, going into Gaza and resettling the Palestinians to safer areas, safer countries. Resettling. That's what UNHCR does. So the question is, why aren't they doing it? And I have an answer for you, because I've been asking. Nobody seems to know why. Why, why are all these Palestinians... The, in southern Gaza stuck there. Egypt doesn't want them. And that's ironic because the, their former leader, Yasser Arafat, is Egyptian. So Egypt doesn't want their own people. We ask, why doesn't Jordan open their doors to the Palestinians? Pal Jordan doesn't want them either. I mean, that's another topic for discussion. Okay, so... The UN should have stepped in and resettled the Palestinians. But what happens instead? South Africa comes up, raises her ugly head, and accuses Israel of genocide. Seriously? You think Israel is the one that invaded Gaza? I think you've got it backwards. So um, the UN, RWA, UNRWA, has its own department in the UN, and their ruling is they will not resettle any refugees. They will instead build 
refugee camps in the area that is at war, which doesn't make any sense to me, but UNRWA is responsible for the safety of the Palestinians in Gaza, okay? So why haven't we, we haven't heard anything really about UNRWA, what they're doing to protect the Palestinians, okay? So what I'm trying to say is there's two departments in the UN that are conflicting with each other. UNHCR won't resettle the Palestinians because the other UN department, UNRWA, says, no, we're not going to resettle the Palestinians. We're going to keep them in Gaza and make them live in refugee camps. Hello? And the United States is sending money to UNRWA until last Friday when they discovered or were informed that UNRWA has Hamas employees working for them. Seriously? Are you taking notes? I mean, this is like such a big joke. I don't, I mean, it's not a joke for the people that are suffering, but see how screwed up this is with the politicians and the UN. And while I'm on a, a roll for the UN, let's talk about uh, UN Resolution 1701. The responsibility of the UN, I mean, this was years ago that the UN created this resolution, 1701, promising to control Hezbollah from not coming close to Israel, to push back Hezbollah up to the Latani River. Did that ever happen? Did that ever happen? Did they ever do what their resolution states? The answer is N-O. And nothing's been done about it. So the question is, who oversees the UN resolutions when they're not implemented? Why do we have the UN? And while we're at it, let's talk about the International Red Cross. Okay, so this big balagan of this war that was started by Hamas on October 7th, 2024, the Red Cross, which also receives funding, is supposed to bring medicine and help to those in a conflict. They have the Red Cross goes in there and helps, treats those that are wounded or need medicine during times of war and war zones. So Nobody could get it together in the middle of this war for the sake of the captives to get their medicine. There's people in there, infants, children, women, soldiers, older senior citizens, captive, captive in tunnels in Gaza that need their medicine. Okay, so the uh, families of the captives... Uh, put pressure on the Israeli government to get the medicine to the captives. So it was decided that Qatar and Egypt would meet to convince Hamas to receive this medicine so that the Red Cross could administer it to the captives as well as the Palestinians. In a ratio that was like 1% of the medicine will go to the captives and 17% of it will go to the Palestinians, or whatever number it is. Okay, I assume it's based on the populations. So what happened? The medicine went to Gaza. Did the captives get any medicine? Let's ask the Red Cross, International Red Cross. The answer is N-O. The captives did not get the medicine. Why? Because Hamas won't let the International Red Cross treat the captives. So again, just like I asked you in the beginning, why isn't the world coming down on Hamas for this inhumane treatment? Why? I ask you that are listening, why? Why aren't the Jews treated the same as everybody else. The UN 
and the International Red Cross need to be called on the carpet. South Africa, never mind your accusations about genocide against the victims. I'm telling you people, in the United States, wake up. We need to, justice needs to be served. What can we do? The least we can do is write to your senators and your Congress people and put the pressure on the President of the United States to get those captives home. And I understand, yes, there's, I don't know how many miles of tunnels in Gaza. Now, when Israel turned this land over to Gaza in the very beginning, it was flourishing, it was green, it was lush. There were gardens in Gaza when the Jews took care of the land, as the Bible says to do. But look at it today. It's concrete cities, and it's a bunch of poverty, and who took all the money? Well, let's see. Uh, if you look at um, Mahmoud Abbas, he lives in a palace, PLO leader that's off and on again. But all the money, apparently, went to building the tunnels. It, there are miles and miles of tunnels in Gaza. The entries are in the schools, the hospitals, for these underground ports. And with all the technology that both Israel and the United States has, we don't have the technology to scout out 136 captives underground. Don't, don't you think we would have that in the United States? I mean, if you look at all this wild technology we've got going on on the boob tube, all right, maybe it, it's in somebody's mind to do tunnel wars. I've, you know, there's video games of doing tunnel wars. But for some reason, Israel is having a hard time eliminating these tunnels because the enemy is hiding the captives in these tunnels. So it's going to take a lot longer, President Biden, to find the captives because they're hiding them below ground. America, you've never fought a war like this underground, so it's not fair to Israel to tell them there's a time limit on how long they can fight in Gaza. They are looking for their family. Israel wants their family, all 136 of them, to come home now. Now, for you Michelle Obama fans, I saw she had a hashtag, uh, bring the girls home now. Well, that's not that's nice too, but I haven't heard her say much publicly on TV uh, about bringing them all home. It's nice you want to bring the girls home, but let's bring them all home. They're all family, not just the girls. And I am again going to tell you again, please, please, please write to your senators and congressmen and demand that they bring the Israeli captives home now, all 136 of them. And if that doesn't happen, it's because nobody's leaning on Hamas. And if nobody is leaning on Hamas, I'm telling you people, we are in big trouble. Okay, well, nobody said anything while they were listening to me. So I hope that you found it interesting, that you will take it home, share it with somebody else. Oh yeah, so let me close with my song uh, that I wrote. I'm a musician. Uh, my name is Deborah Cohen, in case you're wondering, who are you? And I wrote a song at the beginning of, of the war, uh, October 7th, uh, because according to the Bible, the land in Israel belongs to Israel. And anybody that's honest about the, the situation in Israel, the bottom line is it's going to be hard to have peace in the Middle East because the enemy, enemies of Israel, they want to extinguish every last Jew. And you can't have peace with somebody that wants to murder you. If you think that's possible, you're naive. And for those that lingering college students that are waving the hate flags to squash Israel, I invite you to go live with the Palestinians when peace is restored or control, let's say. I invite you to live with the Palestinians in Gaza and 
experience an eye opening about how you will actually be treated. You're not going to be treated like you are in the United States. The Palestinians in the U.S. are different from the ones in Gaza. You need to learn that. You don't know that because you haven't done a missions trip to Gaza. So until you walk a mile in their shoes, I suggest you sit down with a book or apply for a visa and go where the trouble is and see what's really happening. Okay, we got some hearts. Very nice instead of some nasty uh, Gilvin Rodriguez, Super Legal Gusto Show. Okay, thank you. Muchos gracias. Thank you for listening. Uh, and, oh, I'm going to close with this song because I am a musician. Uh, this land, my home, the land belongs to Israel. If you read the Bible, and the uh, Christians call it the Old Testament, it very clearly states you know, I bet you some of you don't even know this. If you read the Old Testament, which a lot of Christians don't because they say that uh, the, what Jesus came to fulfill the law, therefore we're no longer under it. Well, that's wrong because guess what? Jesus Christ was teaching from the Torah. That's the Old Testament. How can he cancel out a book he taught from? Does that make any sense at all? But anyway, if you read there in the book, I don't have the chapter verse handy, um, God gave the land from the Nile River to the Euphrates River to Israel, the children of Israel. God gave the land of Moab, which is part of Jordan, to the Arabs and the Palestinian Arabs. So if we all abided by the scripture, we would have peace. But not even the Israel government has the Torah as its constitution, unfortunately. And this is why we have a big mess. And this is why many Jews, including me, say, Bo Mashiach. Because Mashiach is going to come to Jerusalem and tell you where your land is because the children of all of the nations don't agree to the same book. And even if they are in the same book, they don't agree with the translation of their book. So I'm declaring in this song, which I'm going to share with you, This Land, My Home, that Israel has a right to their land, a right to exist. And any Bible believer has to agree. If you don't agree, then your issue is not with me. It's with God himself. I wish you peace, salam in Arabic, and shalom. This land of my home where the desert blooms life and song. We can see the love of God in our garden of Eden. With loving eyes of moral purity And have respect for all human life And what we speak Our words of love for our brothers and sisters Far, this place, my home In my mind I'm still trying to find it What I'm seeing is not what John imagined In the song Maybe it's only a dream But I feel it in my bones A place place I can call home So I will journey on to the land of the living soul where one day we'll be free and unafraid just to be with love all around us no harm, no fear around me where we can walk easily 
Inside 